And we've seen many events uh, even throughout the city of Toronto this year uh, for Arab Canadians supporting and showing solidarity for their brothers and sisters back in their homeland. Today, the Arab nations are all going to be uniting together to stand up and fight for oppression and to show support for all of the Arab uprisings still ongoing to this day.
people are refugees and there's no end to it. Knowing the truth and still remaining silent is actually worse than ignoring it and being violent. When you're given power to understand reality, then why back away when you can end brutality? Uh, and then a wave of new spring came to our doors that spoke of peace. It brought together those who had forgotten to live with harmony. Without this uplifting occurrence, people were complying to the enemy. Thus, they said they had enough of dictatorship, so their thoughts started exceeding media censorship. And united, they stood against the enemy forces. They stood steady even when they came rushing with horses. Because the power of brotherhood is much stronger than the forces of oppression. You can't quiet down people when they broke free from suppression. Now they're on the street gathers and gathered in herds to make sure their voices are heard. You can't silence peaceful chants and yearnings of freedom. These tyrants and their fake promises can never free them. So now they're taking their lives into their own hands. The justice system is something that blindly stands. Screams for freedom rose from Tunisia and were heard in Egypt. Then they continued as a ripple effect in Yemen and Syria. My brothers and sisters stayed strong in Bahrain and Libya. Palestine, Palestine, how can I forget you? When my prayers, I can never neglect you. I see how the Zionists infect you. We will break the wall of siege. We will break the wall of siege and towards freedom we will reach. All the Arab nations are now united. The fire is now ignited. And it will not only die out when people try and not the tyrannical regimes. Freedom-filled reality will replace our hopeless dreams. This revolution was televised. You can't continue to terrorize. Our blood, tears, and emotions will make sure this isn't a pseudo-revolution. History teaches you will have to fight to reach free will resolutions. And this fight for my rights will continue till I receive them. My thoughts will inform actions that I have known that since I conceived them. For many generations, it was a dream to see Arabs unite to fight for justice and freedom. Today, here in Canada, we're seeing the dream come to reality. Look how everybody's here. Libya, Syria, Egypt, Yemen. Um, first of all, we're going to have some speakers from different, those different uh, Arab nationalities. First, we're going to have Egypt. The Arab awakening in Egypt started on the 25th of January. Together, Muslims and Christians, Egyptians stood to, against Hesni Mubarak's regime. And together they brought down the ending of his 30 year rule, brutal, brutal rule. Right, representing Egypt, the Egyptian community in Toronto, I'd like to welcome Dalia Nurhan and Wael. Hello, everyone. I had the honor to witness the Egyptian revolution being born in the streets of Cairo, the city where I come from. Uh, I saw how brave men and women faced one of the most brutal regimes in the world, which is Hosni Mubarak's regime. People were facing bullets and tear gas with chance of freedom, repeating over and over, Selmeya, Selmeya, we are peaceful, we are peaceful. The whole world witnessed in shock and disbelief how the situation escalated and how the regime revealed its ugly face, giving orders to kill peaceful protesters in cold blood, sending armored vehicles to crush demonstrators, and releasing armed thugs to terrorize our neighborhoods and attack foreign reporters. They wanted to send fear into the heart of a peace-loving nation, but the Egyptians defied the regime and showed what a great nation Egypt is. We continued the road. We started in Medan al Tahrir or Tahrir Square in the heart of Cairo. Through peaceful means, we managed to topple Mubarak, who managed to keep his seat for 30 years. We willingly sacrificed our lives to write with our own blood a new chapter in the long and glorious history of our beloved country. Under the name of January 25th, that will be the day the revolution started and the day that will be celebrated for generations to come as a day of freedom, liberation, and dignity. We couldn't have done all that without your support. The people of the free world. Marches were held in many places around the globe in support of our fight for democracy. You inspired us all and gave us the power to move forward towards victory. As the Canadian people defied the freezing cold of Canadian winter and went into the streets in support of our cause, 
the Egyptian people now are facing a brutal summer, but still they are marching in thousands and millions in streets of Cairo and all other cities. After the fall of Hisni Mubarak, hope filled the spirits of the Arab world. Hence, more uprising occurred. On the 15th of February, Libya joined the new wave of the uprising in the Middle East. So let's welcome Wafa and Selma representing the Libyan community in Canada. Hi everyone, my name is Wafa and this is my friend Selma and today we're speaking about Libya. Today marks the fifth month of the Libyan uprising, although our protest did start on February 4th, 15th by the families of the Boussinim prison victims. For those of you not familiar with Boussinim, uh, the Gaddafi regime killed over 1,200 innocent prisoners on June 29th, 1996. These were also innocent individuals who, wanted, who were fighting for the basic human rights. A revolution started in the eastern city of Benghazi, and like all other Arab revolutions, they started off peacefully, but unfortunately turned violent quickly because those protesting with met, were met with brute force by Gaddafi's soldiers. However, that didn't deter our freedom fighters, and four days later, Benghazi was free, and inshallah, all of Libya will be free soon. The situation turned from one that was dire to one of a humanitarian crisis as Gaddafi forces use snipers and warplanes to quash protests. Libyans are the world and Libya urged the UN to implement a no-fly zone. On March 13th, the Arab League stood in solidarity with the Libyan people and voted in support of a no-fly zone. And four days later, the United Nations implemented the no-fly zone. The International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Gaddafi on June 27th because like other governments of the Arab Spring, the Gaddafi regime has committed countless crimes against humanity. Reports of rape began to trickle out, and it soon became apparent that Gaddafi regime was using rape as a weapon of war. Gaddafi forces have used, in addition to snipers, warplanes, anti-aircraft weaponry, and artillery, even during funerals, which is a tactic that has also been used by the Syrian regime. Soldiers who refused to fire were executed and burned alive, and any sign of dissent was met with a violent backlash. This has resulted in a, in a surging death toll that has surpassed 10,000 Libyans. And now we're going to lighten up things a little bit. We're going to have a little bit of an entertainment. We're going to have for you today, Mahan, who's going to do a little rap for us. Let's hear it from Mahan. <laughs> Yeah, really. 